Today, I will be reading a sutta, which is one of the most powerful suttas in the Majjhima Nikaya. It is called the Six Sets of Six, the Chachaka Sutta number 148, as translated by Bhikkhu Bodhi. This version is from Bhantadimna Ramsey. Uh, he took out the dot, dot, dot marks um, that are used by Bhikkhu Bodhi for the repetition uh, in the phrases. He wrote it out fully. So there is going to be a lot of repetition in this sutta and it is on purpose. It might take about an hour or so to read it to you. And please clear your mind and listen closely because it will help your meditation and your understanding very much. So if you get distracted, just let go, 6R, and continue listening. So this will be more like a listening meditation. There will be no question and answers after this and no sharing of merit. Instead, uh, we will end the meeting in silence as soon as the sutta is finished. It would be helpful if afterwards you could stretch the body for a little bit and then sit down to meditate. There have been people who had a very profound experience just by listening to this sutta very attentively. Um, can anyone, uh, can everyone hear me? Uh, yes? Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Thus have I heard, on one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Savati in Jetta's Grove, Anatta Pindaka's Park. There he addressed the students thus. Students, venerable sir, they replied. The Blessed One said this. I shall teach you the Dhamma that is good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end, with the right meaning and phrasing. I shall reveal a holy life that is utterly perfect and pure, that is the six sets of six. Listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, venerable sir, the students replied. The blessed one said this. The six internal bases should be understood. The six external bases should be understood. The six classes of consciousness should be understood. The six classes of contact should be understood. The six classes of feeling should be understood. The six classes of craving should be understood. The six internal bases should be understood, so it was said. And with reference to what was this said, there are the eye base, the ear base, the nose base, the tongue base, the body base, and the mind base. So it was with reference to this that it was said, the six internal bases should be understood. This is the first set of six. The six external bases should be understood, so it was said. And with reference to what was this said, there are the form base, the sound base, the odor base, the flavor base, the tangible base, and the mind object base. So it was with reference to this that it was said, the six external bases should be understood. This is the second set of six. The six classes of consciousness should be understood. So it was said. And with reference to what was this said? Dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. Dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. So it was with reference to this that it was said, 
the six classes of consciousness should be understood. This is the third set of six. The six classes of contact should be understood. So it was said, and with reference to what was this said, dependent on the I and forms, I consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is I contact. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. Dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. So it was with reference to this that it was said, the six classes of contact should be understood. This is the fourth set of six. The six classes of feeling should be understood. So it was said, and with reference to what was this said, dependent on the I and forms, I consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is I contact. With I contact as condition, there is I feeling. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there is ear feeling. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there is nose feeling. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there is tongue feeling. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is body contact. With body contact as condition, there is body feeling. Dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there is mind feeling. So it was with reference to this that it was said, the six classes of feeling should be understood. This is the fifth set of six. The six classes of craving should be understood. So it was said, and with reference to what was he said, dependent on the I and forms, I consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is I contact. With I contact as condition, there is I feeling. With I feeling as condition, there is I craving. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there is ear feeling. With ear feeling as condition, there is ear craving. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there is nose feeling. With nose feeling as condition, there is nose craving. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there is tongue feeling. With tongue feeling as condition, there is tongue craving. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there is body feeling. With body feeling as condition, there is body craving. 
dependent on mind and mind object, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there is mind feeling. With mind feeling as condition, there is mind craving. So it was with reference to this that it was said, the six classes of craving should be understood. This is the sixth, sixth set of six. If anyone says the I is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the I is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the I is self. Thus, the I is not self. If anyone says I forms are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of forms are seen and understood. And since, since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I forms are self. Thus, the I is not self, forms are not self. If anyone says, I consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I consciousness is self. Thus, I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self. If anyone says, I contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I contact is self. Thus, I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self, I contact is not self. If anyone says, I feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the I feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I feeling is self. Thus, the I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self, I contact is not self, I feeling is not self. If anyone says, I craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I craving is self. Thus, I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self, I contact is not self, I feeling is not self, I craving is not self. If anyone says ear is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the ear is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the ear is self. Thus, the ear is not self. If anyone says sounds are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of sounds are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say sounds are self. Thus, the ear is not self, sounds are not self. If anyone says ear consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow 
myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say ear consciousness is self. Thus, the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self. If anyone says ear contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say ear contact is self. Thus, the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self, ear contact is not self. If anyone says ear feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall, and fall of ear feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say ear feeling is self. Thus, the ear is not self. Sounds are not self. Ear consciousness is not self. Ear contact is not self. Ear feeling is not self. If anyone says ear craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say ear craving is self. Thus the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self, Ear contact is not self. Ear feeling is not self. Ear craving is not self. If anyone says nose is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the nose is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the nose is self. Thus, the nose is not self. If anyone says odors are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of odors are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say odors are self. Thus, the nose is not self, odors are not self. If anyone says nose consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and falls, a fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose consciousness is self. Thus, the nose is not self, odors are not self. Nose consciousness is not self. If anyone says nose contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose contact is self. Thus, the nose is not self. Odors are not self. Nose consciousness is not self. Nose contact is not self. If anyone says nose feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose feeling is self. Thus, nose is not self, odors are not self, nose consciousness is not self, nose contact is not self, nose feeling is not self. If anyone says nose craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose craving is self. 
Thus, nose is not self. Odors are not self. Nose consciousness is not self. Nose contact is not self. Nose feeling is not self. Nose craving is not self. If anyone says the tongue is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the tongue is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the tongue is self. Thus, the tongue is not self. If anyone says flavors are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and falls, fall of flavors are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say flavors are self. Thus, the tongue is not self, flavors are not self. If anyone says tongue consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue consciousness is self. Thus, the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is not self. If anyone says tongue contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue contact is self. Thus, the tongue is not self. Flavors are not self. Tongue consciousness is not self. Tongue contact is not self. If anyone says tongue feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue feeling is self. Thus tongue is not self. Flavors are not self. Tongue consciousness is not self. Tongue contact is not self. Tongue feeling is not self. If anyone says tongue craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue craving is self. Thus, the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is not self, tongue contact is not self, tongue feeling is not self, tongue craving is not self. If anyone says body is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the body is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body is self. Thus, the body is not self. If anyone says tangibles are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tangibles are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tangibles are self. Thus, the body is not self, tangibles are not self. If anyone says body consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body consciousness is self. Thus, the body is not self. Tangibles are not self. Body consciousness is not self. If anyone says body contact is self, that is not acceptable. 
the rise and fall of body contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body contact is self. Thus, the body is not self. Tangibles are not self. Body consciousness is not self. Body contact is not self. If anyone says body feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body feeling is self. Thus the body is not self, tangibles are not self, body consciousness is not self, body contact is not self, body feeling is not self. If anyone says body craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body craving is self. Thus the body is not self. Tangibles are not self. Body consciousness is not self. Body contact is not self. Body feeling is not self. Body craving is not self. If anyone says mind is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind is self. Thus, mind is not self. If anyone says mind objects are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind objects are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind objects are self. Thus mind is not self, mind objects are not self. If anyone says mind consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind consciousness is self. Thus mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind consciousness is not self. If anyone says mind contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind contact is self. Thus, mind is not self. Mind objects are not self. Mind consciousness is not self. Mind contact is not self. If anyone says mind feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind feeling is self. Thus mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind consciousness is not self, mind contact is not self, mind feeling is not self. If anyone says mind craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind craving is self. Thus mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind consciousness is not self, mind contact is not self, mind feeling is not self, mind craving is not self.
Now, this is the way leading to the origination of identity. One regards the I thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards form, uh, forms thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards I consciousness thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards I contact thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards I feeling thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards I craving thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards the ear thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards sounds thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards ear consciousness thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards ear contact thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards ear feeling thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards ear craving thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards the nose thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards odors thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards knows consciousness thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards knows contact thus. This is mine. This is this I am. This is myself. One regards knows feeling thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards knows craving thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards the tongue thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards flavors thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue consciousness thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regard tongue contact thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards tongue feeling thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards tongue craving thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards the body thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards tangibles thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards body consciousness thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards body contact thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards body feeling thus. This is mine. This I am, this is myself. One regards body craving thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind objects thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind consciousness thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards mind contact thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards mind feeling thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards mind craving thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. 
Now this is the way leading to the cessation of identity. One regards the I thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards forms thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards I consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards I contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards I feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards I craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the ear thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards sounds thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the nose thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards odors thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards nose consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards nose contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards nose feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards nose craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the tongue thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards flavors thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tongue consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tongue contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tongue feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tongue craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the body thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tangibles thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards body consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards body contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards body feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards body craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the mind thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind objects thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. 
one regards mind consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. Dependent on the I and forms, I consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is I contact. With I contact as condition, there arises an I feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant eye feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful eye feeling, if one sorrows, grieves and laments, weeps, beatings one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful eye feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that eye feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. That one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant eye feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards eye painful feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful eye feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there arises an ear feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant ear feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful ear feeling, if one sorrows, griefs and laments, weeps beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that ear feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. That one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant ear feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful ear feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Dependent on nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there arises a nose feeling felt as pleasant or painful, or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant nose feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful nose feeling, if one sorrows, griefs and laments, weeps, beating one's breast and becomes distraught, 
then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that nose feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. That one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant nose feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful nose feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Dependent on tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there arises a tongue feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant tongue feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful tongue feeling, if one sorrows, griefs and laments, weeps, beating one's breasts and breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a ne neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that tongue feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. That one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant tongue feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful tongue feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Dependent on body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there arises a body feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant body feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful body feeling, if one sorrows, grieves and laments, weeps, beatings, beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful body feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that body feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. That one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant body feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful body feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful body feeling, Without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Depending on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there arises a mind feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant mind feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it and remains holding to it, 
then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful mind feeling, if one sorrows, grieves and laments, weeps, beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regards to that mind feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. That one should here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant mind feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards mind painful feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge. This is impossible. Dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is eye contact. With eye contact as condition, there arises an eye feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant. When one is touched by a pleasant eye feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful eye feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve and lament, does not weep, beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by neither painful nor pleasant eye feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that eye feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. That one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant eye feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful eye feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither painful nor pleasant eye feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there arises an ear feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant. When one is touched by a pleasant ear feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it, and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful ear feeling, if one does not sorrow, grief and lament, does not weep, beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by a neither painful nor pleasant ear feeling, if one understands as it, as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that ear feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. That one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant ear feeling by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful ear feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither painful nor pleasant ear feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible.
Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there arises a nose feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant. When one is touched by a pleasant nose feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful nose feeling, if one does not sorrow, grief and lament, does not weep beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by neither painful nor pleasant nose feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that nose feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. That one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant nose feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful nose feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency in regard to neither painful nor pleasant nose feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, that is possible. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there arises a tongue feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant. When one is touched by a pleasant tongue feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful tongue feeling, if one does not sorrow, grief and lament, does not weep beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by neither painful nor pleasant tongue feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that tongue feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance, ignorance does not lie within one. That one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant tongue feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful tongue feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither painful nor pleasant tongue feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Dependent on body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there arises a body feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant. When one is touched by a pleasant body feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful body feeling, if one does not sorrow, grief and lament, does not weep, beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by a neither painful nor pleasant body feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regarding to that body feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. That one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant body feeling, 
by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful body feeling by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither painful nor pleasant body feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there arises a mind feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant. When one is touched by a pleasant mind feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful mind feeling, if one does not sorrow, grief and lament, does not weep beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by a neither painful nor pleasant mind feeling, if one understands as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that mind feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. That one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant mind feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion for painful mind feeling by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither painful nor pleasant mind feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Seeing thus, a well-taught noble disciple becomes disenchanted with the eye, disenchanted with forms, disenchanted with eye consciousness, disenchanted with eye contact, disenchanted with eye feeling, disenchanted with eye craving. One becomes disenchanted with the ear, disenchanted with sounds, disenchanted with ear consciousness, disenchanted with ear contact, disenchanted with ear feeling disenchanted with ear craving. One becomes disenchanted with the nose, disenchanted with odors, disenchanted with nose consciousness, disenchanted with nose contact, disenchanted with nose feeling, disenchanted with nose craving. One becomes disenchanted with the tongue, disenchanted with flavors, disenchanted with tongue consciousness, disenchanted with tongue contact, disenchanted with tongue feeling, disenchanted with tongue craving. One becomes disenchanted with the body, disenchanted with tangibles, disenchanted with body consciousness, disenchanted with body contact, disenchanted with body feeling, disenchanted with body craving. One becomes disenchanted with the mind, disenchanted with mind objects, disenchanted with mind consciousness, disenchanted with mind contact, disenchanted with mind feeling, disenchanted with mind craving. Being disenchanted, one becomes dispassionate. Through dispassion, one's mind is liberated. When it is liberated, there comes the knowledge. It is liberated. One understands birth is destroyed. The holy life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more coming to any state of being. That is what the Blessed One said. The students were satisfied and delighted 
in the Blessed One's words. Now, while this discourse was being spoken through not clinging, the minds of 60 students were liberated from the taints. Sad, sad, sad. Now go stretch and meditate. See you tomorrow.